Greetings sailors and welcome back to some live Willow Warships and as promised, the breast. And unlike Jingles, I think I can manage to get through this one without giggling even once. But who knows? We'll see. Now following on after the tier 8, this one actually has a nice upgrade in calibre to the same guns that the, the Dunkirk and the Strasbourg have and uh, it, it's a nice extra dose of penetration, fire chance, etc, etc. And even though those guns down at tier 6 are, even at tier 6 are a relatively small calibre on a, on a battleship, uh, they still perform pretty well, it's just the accuracy that kind of lets them down. And I think this does have better accuracy than, than the Dunkirk, but don't quote me on that. I probably should, uh, I probably should uh, check things like that before I open my mouth. But sometimes I don't mind going to say these things in advance, so... Yeah, anyway, the assertion is out there now, so feel free to point out that I'm horribly wrong in the comments, as always. You know, that's always an option in my videos. Uh, so yeah, this is fully upgraded. I actually have almost ground through to the uh, the Marseille already. Uh, it hasn't even taken that long, although partially that's because I've got the... Uh, the blue XP bonus going, and uh, yeah, that's that's really spread things up as it tends to. And obviously, having still quite a lot of premium account time does help as well. But even without it, it's one of those grinds that's been pretty easy for me overall. And really, as I said for the tier eight, you know, I've actually uh, found this line weirdly comfortable to play. And I know it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but. Uh, yeah, uh, I've actually gotten on quite well with them so far. It's been almost enjoyable, one might say. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes things are enjoyable and sometimes things are just painless. You know, they're not, they're not necessarily enjoyable, but they're not painful to play. So I think it's more painless than enjoyable, but uh, I've certainly had some reasonably fun matches in these ships as well. So I'm kind of curious to see how the Marseille performs at Tier 10. The downside is though that it's going to be a tier 10, and that's not among my favourite tiers to play. Uh, yeah, there's even only a couple of tier 9 cruisers I really uh, like playing, and, and those tend to be the ones with the bigger guns, like the Siegfried. So this sort of fits in with that category, I suppose, Siegfried and Kronstadt and uh, uh, Azuma. Although, <laughs> when you've got Yoshino available, do you really need to play Azuma? I suppose the, the only real benefit is that Zuma is lower tier. Anyway, so Tears of the Desert. Uh, let's angle off. We'll stick with High Explosive to start with. So we don't know what we're going to see at what angle. And if it's a destroyer, then obviously HE is going to be useful. And uh, yeah, like I said, it does have a, a pretty respectable, what is it, like 30 something percent fire chance, which is pretty good for the caliber. And, uh, you know, for a heavy cruiser, if you consider it as a heavy cruiser, that is uh, pretty damn good indeed. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we'll see what gets uh, spotted. Um, no uh, subs or CVs, which is nice. Uh, but they do have a top tier. What is that? The D division is Burgoyne and the Shima. And then the two Vermonts are in a division as well. Okay. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. No destroy divisions. Uh, nobody in the cruiser is in a division either, so... Uh, yeah, nothing overtly worrisome. Obviously there are always things that are going to be a pain if they're played well. Like the Shuma, for example, but uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Oh, good, I'm not going to bump into that. Cristoforo Colombo. And we'll see if our Shima spots something, because our Shima... Uh, I mean, they've got a Shima as well, but I think our Shima should be... ...easily the most... Uh, yeah, I mean, there's not much that's stealthier than the Shima. You have to go down to the low-tier destroyers, really. Um, but, yeah, so our Shima would have a good chance of spotting and everything but the enemy Shima. Right, that's actually uh, enemy Aegea, uh, who's nice on broadside, and uh, of course I had the HE loaded, but that's fine. And we'll see if they bothered 
them were calling that. Yes, they did. But we're going to stick with the AP because uh, the uh, the broadside is very, very tempting. And so, why not? I might even... Let me slow down a bit. Yes, you are. So we've got the reload booster going so we can get off another shot relatively quickly. Still going to get some hits though. Uh, nothing spectacular, but still. Not terrible. Now, is that a battleship targeting me? I think so. You're putting an awful lot of confidence in your... Uh, <laughs> there we go. In your side armor there, AG. I think maybe a bit too much confidence. It's got a pretty good belt for a cruiser, but you kind of still want to angle it a bit. Right, speed boosts through the turn. Oh, hello, Yoshino. Oh, oh, you're awfully broadside there. Come on, Iron Jesus. Oh, Yoshino, I want this to hurt. Oh, and it didn't. It really didn't. Three other pens. That is lackluster. Uh, yeah, it's always annoying when you see someone who's, who's just in a position where, oh, they absolutely deserve to get uh, spanked, as it were. Right, we're not going to have the angle for that. Let's try for that idea. Especially as they've run a ground broadside. I mean, oh, that's just begging for it. Oh. That's going to be their destroyer that's picking me up there. Artillery bots detector. Um, I, I mean, okay. I, I've, I've seen bots that that sail a bit more intelligently that than that, but uh, okay. Right, that yeah, is that's going to be a sheet at all. Should we just turn the other way, actually? I think so. We're going to go to high explosive after this. In fact, let's go for high explosive now. I don't think I've got artillery reloads expert or whatever it's called on this. Oh, hello, Torp's coming from that direction. So there's a, I think there's a destroyer up by that island. Triple Torps, what could those be? Well, it's just Triple Torps that are spotted. Oh, hello, Fletcher. Uh, right, either he... No, he's, he's spinning up again. A little. This is definitely Don't time to use a reload ball. booster. Uh, I'm guessing you don't have a smoke shimmer, or are you turning before you want to use your smoke? Your I did have a smoke available, but uh, I, I don't know. Maybe it was on cooldown. We got first damage taken. Come on, kill the Fletcher. Not quite dangerous in this matchup. Nice, okay. Right, the edge is down, so that just leaves these two battleships on the run, and they don't really have a screaming destroyer anymore. Uh, our Shima is very low health, though, which is not going to serve them well if they run into the enemy Shima. Or now be. A fairly easy prey, in theory. Right, I think this is where we want to try and get some fires going if we can. He's broadside, but if we can get some ticking fire damage, that would be lovely. I do wonder what's spotting me. It might be something down there. How's everyone around me doing? Right, the Colombo took a bit of a battering. I think a lot of that will have been torpedo damage. Got the Duncan's got uh, <laughs> a unique profile. Okay, I'm not spotted just now. So somebody's literally renamed their account to Smasher. 
I spot me a Warhammer 40k Orc fan. Oh hello, why is there talks coming from the north? Uh, okay then. I was right, you know. I thought that might have been Fletcher torpedoes, but no, that is in fact... Uh, <laughs> that is in fact something else. Okay then, well, somebody just came up here, skirted all around the camp and has been ineffectively putting torpedoes down. I'm guessing it's the Zorki? Based on the speed of those torps? No, the Zorki's down there, so... It's the enemy Shima. It was in the division with the Borgonia, so I guess I, I, I should have guessed that, but even so, that's... That's a bit weird. They're not using the, uh... Uh, 20 kilometer torps. It seemed very slow though. Don't know. That's why I looked at them and thought, oh, those are the Zorki torps. They seem quite slow. Where are you? Is where radio location would come in useful. 40 seconds of hydro. No, that's allied torps. Oh, he's there. He's, he's around that side. I mean, this is slightly frustrating, uh, but we've basically won this already. So, while he's sort of dancing with me, he's not pestering anyone else. Although, having said that, yeah, he's dropped on the Yoshino. Which, uh, that actually might hit. Bad news for the Yoshino. Uh, okay, he took one. Uh, the Shino is not in a great position right now. He's now stuck broadside to those battleships. Uh, <laughs> we don't have long to go in this match, though. I've not really had to do very much. I mean, we've lost two ships. Enemy teams down to their last five. There goes the Zorki. Hello, Shima. Right, you might be nearly done on one of your reloads. But, uh... Bow on, I mean, I don't really have to worry that much. Having the Hydro now would be useful, of course. Okay, not going to get the immediate benefit of the reload. But that's alright. Boop! Ah, oh, I didn't get to get the kill, but uh, that extra bit of damage against the Shima will have helped my score some at the end. Yeah, that was a pretty low damage game, but... I mean, that enemy team was, um... Not the toughest bunch of opponents ever. Still over a thousand base XP. In fact, all but three people had over a thousand base XP. That Begonia did well, we'll give them a compliment. Nearly two thousand base XP. I still had three very healthy battleships at the end there. So, battle on. That was quite a short one, really. So this time a carrier, we've also got a, a test ship, the Alvaro de Bazan. Which is... Uh, is that smokeless? I can't remember. It's a Spanish version of the Capitani Romanis. But it has rather different uh, capabilities. I can't remember the exact ones, and I know it's still... Uh, you know, it's like been changed very recently or they've announced it's been changed very recently so it's one that they're still tinkering with but yes it's not a fuel smoke destroyer I seem to recall okay uh well that's actually a question north or south let's stick with the Austin's going that way let's stick with this southern flank then or this western the southwestern flank I say southern flank because you know it's this kind of area, but uh, it's also this kind of area, so... <laughs> it's complicated, you guys! Four whole compass points, it's complicated. Mind you, if I ever feel bad, there's this one... Uh, <laughs> Minecraft series, of all things, that I watch where the guy has to constantly remind himself by saying, um, oh, what's the mnemonic he uses? It's something like, never eat shredded wheat to remember which of the cardinal directions are which. I'm not that bad at least. <laughs> so 
So that's some small consolation, I suppose. Also, bonus points if you know, I guess, just from that, which Minecraft YouTuber I am talking about. I mean, they've got a pretty reasonable number of subscribers, so there's a very good chance that uh, at least one other person watching knows. Anyhow, um, yeah, this is actually uh, some lower tier ships here. Um, I feel a bit sorry for the tier 8 cruisers. The Erland is not going to be so bad off, nor the Kid. I mean, they're both reasonably capable in terms of their AA capabilities. Um, we've got the sneakiest destroyer, so that's nice. That doesn't mean as much when there's a carrier around, of course. Uh, but yeah, some of those battleship guns could be really, really nasty, and the Venezia's broadside also, also could be very nasty, so yeah. Hell, even if the Mainz manages um, to uh, park up somewhere behind uh, a suitable rock and use their rate of fire, that could also potentially be very nasty. Right, there is the, uh, the bazaar. And they're doing long-range gunboaty things, so yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying they do not have smoke. Uh, Shima, are you... What's the Erland? Right, somebody is targeting me. I'm going to be doing... playing with your throttle things, aren't you? As expected. The question is how quickly... Do you accelerate? Well, there's one. And there's the DCP. Oh, the Erland might be the bigger priority right now. They keep popping in and out of... Uh, concealment. Try and guesstimate which way they're turning. Right, that is very bad for Ashima. Um, but I would not normally, I mean, going into the camp that way is not something I tend to do for precisely this reason. It, you, you need to do a fair bit of running to escape, basically. There's the Venezia. Um, and uh, yeah, they've discovered that to their cost. So that's rather bad news. It's rather bad news indeed. There's no way really to now go in and force that Erland out because um, that will uh, put one in a bit too much of a perilous position in a non-sneaky ship. Stick with high explosive for the time being. There we go. It's thinly enough armoured that um, I mean, my HE isn't, uh, <laughs> it's not like a British battleship HE or anything like that, but it's not terrible. Okay, this is looking less rosy. Um, yeah, our, our control of this flank is not great. I'm not sure how it is on the other side. Uh, if the Austin can pew-pew the Fletcher, then that's at least one dangerous destroyer down. Why are you pinging there? There's definitely nothing there. You know where the Erland is? Hello, Yama. You were trying to do a drop on me, Shikaku. I guess you are. Oh no, that was the end of... That was the tail of their drop on the... Yeah, so, um... Yeah. Yeah, we are. They still have... Oh, yeah, that hurt. Many healthy ships. Uh, I mean, they're a destroyer down now as well, so that's good. Uh, it's just the the, the bizarre, and that is not uh, sneaky, stealthy, cappy destroyer necessarily. So one of the reasons why it's such a gamble playing smokeless destroyers because you never know when you're going to get a CV, which just so dramatically changes the equation. Can we get shots over that? No. What, if I can survive? I think... Okay, this is this is looking a bit better. Yeah, if I survive, I think I can make this a better damage game. But yeah, overall it is looking better now. 
with the sneaky destroyers out of commission. Um, oh, what is spotting me? Don't know. Um, yeah, so as long as we don't get lots of people dying unnecessarily, it's not the bazaar. So it, it must be um, the Venezia or the mines down in that stretch of water there. Yeah, it must be. It must be. Yeah, there's the Venezia. Come on, give me some fires. This 3k damage hits. I mean, the HE alone is it's fine, but you really want to get some fires. Is that HE loaded for a destroyer? I guess so. Oh, hello. I get some hits on you. There goes the Marlborough. Not the most worrisome opponent, but still. Good that it's gone. You're going to turn in. The ammo's just fired. Let's actually use a... Nice. Another hit on the Debazan. Yeah, let's use the reload booster. I do like that they're quite generous with the reload boosters on these. Oh, yeah, see, I was talking about Venezia can hurt. It really can. That Venezia roadside is nasty. Now the Preussen's having a pop. Oh, as is the Yamato. It's the awkwardness of uh, ee, when you're heading away from people. <laughs> That turret arrangement, you have to angle out far more than is safe. Right, um, we only have one heal left. Uh, no, we've got two heals left, but very, very little health I can actually get back. I've just taken so many heavy AP penetrations. So I'm going to have to play it cautious. I mean, again, we are winning. Uh, we would have to throw this pretty hard. Um, reversing Iowa, bow tanking, just like you're playing a Yamato yourself, I guess. Uh, if I can get the rocks in between me and the Yamato, I can maybe get some more fire damage. I was thinking this is, this is definitely going to be a much better uh, damage game, and um, actually, no, maybe not so much. We're actually turning broadside. Let's load the AP. Hey, at least I'm getting my maximum AR boost, which is all that matters. Uh, let's... Let's use the. Uh... That might even have been a waste, but never mind. I think it's going to die to something else before my shells get there. Nope! Ninja the kill! There we go. All is planned. All is planned. I always knew it was going to go like that. Okay, at longer ranges, I don't know if the AP is going to perform that well. We more rely on the uh, superstructure hits. Actually, if I go forward into the camp, there's some island cover I can use there. Yeah, okay, that's pretty decent. That's pretty decent. It's one of the things I remember way back from uh, testing the Dunkirk is... Uh, man, the dispersion was very, very rough when it first came out. I think it's improved a little bit since then. Uh, certainly the reload has. But, um, yeah, uh, it was... Uh, it's one of those weird moments that just sticks in my mind, probably more because I put it in a video than anything else, but uh, it was like facing a, a, a confidently broadside, uh, it was either a Bismarck or a Tirpitz, and I uh, had some rather nice RNG and uh, did quite a lot of damage to them. The penetration was just not an issue, even slightly. Right, yes, I know, I know I'm attempting target right now, Preussen. Because I'm low health. So I just to go for someone else though, who's a bit closer, I guess. Maybe more temptingly angled, or... Oh, I'm going to ninja that one as well. I mean, sure. Sure. So yeah, neither of those were particularly amazing games. They were 
at best deeply, deeply average, if not a bit underwhelming in terms of damage. But again, placed okay on the team board. Again, over a thousand XP. Um, this looked a bit dicey early on, to be honest. But uh, I mean, um, Aramalfi did pretty well for being the Amalfi, and the Austrians certainly pulled their weight. So. Uh, yeah, this was initially looking like a much trickier match than it actually turned out to be. Uh, so yeah, um, neither of them super amazing interesting games, but that's what happens when I'm recording live. Occasionally you get the super amazing interesting games, but you're much more likely to get the uh, very much average games, and even just those two very much average games have put me very, very close now to, to getting the Marseille. So. Uh, yeah, we're going to, I guess, uh, make this a trilogy of these live play videos and next time you will probably see the Marseille, although I'm going to have to grind an awful lot of credits to get there first. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to do some intensive playing of premiums over the next few days, I suspect. So that is it for this um, very comparatively short <laughs> live replay pair of games. I mean, we're not even at half an hour. No normally I'm looking at uh, sort of 45 minutes. But um, yeah, instead of it being for the wrong reasons of just getting crushed quickly, this time we were crushing the enemy team quickly. So, yay! Makes for less interesting games, but at the end of the day, it's all about that win rate, right? That's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this pair of games, and if you did, you can do all the usual things down underneath the video. And of course, as always, stay tuned for more.